<laughs> if Pearl Jam had a male singer, if U2 didn't have a tool as a front man, hey. if Metallica actually had balls, they still wouldn't be Guar. That's because plain and simple, Guar rules. Back again after a triumphant inaugural visit to Red Eye, our new interplanetary <laughs> correspondent, Guar's delightful singer, Odorous Arungus. He's as evil as I am oval. Odorous, as always, you look great. Thank you. Uh, the skin cream is really working out. Thanks for sending it. Uh, yeah, I knew you'd like it. It's homemade. <laughs> uh, before we hit, I didn't say I'm supposed to eat it. Before we hit the news, I want to know what's Gore been up to: pillaging, touring, pillaging and touring. Yeah, all of the above. We're getting ready for our big uh, 25th anniversary on planet Earth, and uh, the release of our new album, Lust in Space, uh, out next month on Metal Blade Records. <laughs> Fantastic. Now, as as our, you're not just an interplanetary inter 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 correspondent. You're also an accomplished musician. I want to ask you about this woman in Minnesota who was ordered to pay $80,000 to rec to record companies for illegal downloading tracks. A jury ruled that she violated the copyrights and had to pay like one point. $0.92 million. Is this just another example to Guar of man's inhumanity to man, or is it right that she got punished? Well, yeah, it's uh, actually man's inhumanity to woman. I think that was a woman and <laughs> yes. a very ugly woman at that. But, you know, she's been punished enough because apparently all she downloaded was a Kenny G and ABBA soundtrack. <laughs> really? I think she suffered enough at this point. <laughs> yes, she has. She has. Now, I want to, um, what is, what, what's, where does Guar stand on those who illegally download Guar songs? Because you're not, it's on taking. Their necks until their heads explode. <laughs> really? Hmm. Yeah, I mean, basically, we cover ourselves on that. When you listen to Guar music, you, you, your head blows up. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> All right. I want to move on to planetary issues. It looks like a lake has been discovered on Mars. Apparently, it's a long, deep canyon with uh, actually having the remains of beaches. What do you make of this? Oh, yeah. Well, there's a reason uh, Mars is known as the Red Planet. It's because it's drenched in blood. Yeah, it dried up a while ago, but we used to uh, used to go there and kill the peaceful people that lived on that planet, the blowtorns. They were very nice and cultured and very physically refined, and for that, they had to die. <laughs> Interesting. Well, you answered my next question. Was there life on Mars, and should we kill it? <laughs> so, yeah. thank you. Uh, life anywhere. Check, kill. check. Uh, yeah. Now, I want to move on to something called spaceport. America. It's the first tourist spaceport in New Mexico, and it's expected to begin sending tourists into space next year aboard Virgin Galactic flights. This is pretty historic. What do you make of it? I think it's a waste of money. I'm very super powered, and if you just come down to the slave pit, I can hurl you into near orbit for absolutely nothing. Really? Interesting. Yeah, now, yeah, yeah. You might want to bring an oxygen mask or something, but I can even catch as well. Fantastic. Yeah. Now, according to Virgin, 45,000 people have registered to take a trip, and each person will have to pay 200 grand per trip to go up 50,000 feet in the air. What kind of people would pay that much to do that? Really rich people who have, don't have really expensive drug habits, I guess. I mean, just spend that money on a Guar show or maybe 200,000 Guar t-shirts. <laughs> it's so true. All right, I want to talk to you about this. This is something I just read about. There's a planned bombing in October of the moon by a NASA orbiter. It's going to be using a two-ton kinetic weapon to create a five-mile-wide deep crater. And it's a water-seeking and lunar colonization experiment. Some are saying this is an act of war against extraterrestrials. Do you agree? Oh, the, the moon has already had the heck kicked out of it, didn't you? S look at all the craters all over the surface of it. We bombed the hell out of the moon over 5,000 parsecs ago. Really? It's a waste of time. Really? But is there any... Yeah, it's already flat and destroyed. There's nothing on the moon. <laughs> There's nothing on the moon? But they're, they're... No, no, that's why they're doing the next episode of I'm a celebrity, get me the hell out of here. Mm. On the moon. Oh, interesting. You know, critics claim this act is contrary to space law, prohibiting environmental modification of celestial bodies. What's the point of visiting a planet if you can't modify it? That's what I say. None of this uh, prime directive Star Trek crap. If you're going to outer space, you might as well modify a body. I made a career out of modifying bodies, and I'm the only law in this universe or any other. The law of war. Can I say something, Greg? Yeah, Juliet has a question I'm for you. I'm just wondering if you if you uh, are, have anybody like in your life because Essie is just mesmerized by you. One of the ladies here on set. She's well, they, they, that's why they wouldn't let. 
me come to New York this time. They were afraid that you girls would just fall in love with me. <laughs> it's <laughs> too late. <laughs> well, uh, Otis, uh, you're really hot. <laughs> 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 Odorous, we gotta go. Thank you so much. Happy face. We'll see you soon. Uh, 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 wait, do I get to come back to New York? Yes, you do, if you're good. If you promise not to kill people. <laughs> Yes, very good. I, I, I look forward to talking to you again. Uh, right. You're one of this planet's most lovely miniature delights. <laughs> All right, coming up next, I'll read and answer some of your emails from this weekend. <laughs> Coming up tomorrow on the next Red Eye, we'll have Fox News Channel anchor Rick Fulbaum, FoxBusiness.com's Anna Gilligan, and actor and comedian Adam Carolla. Woo -hoo. Woo -hoo. I love, love me some Carolla. <laughs> Time to go back to Griff Jenkins for the postgame wrap up. Hey, Griff. Hey, Greg. Nice hat. Thank uh, you. Attorney General Gutfeld. <laughs> I rest my case. <laughs> Juliet. Let's talk for a moment. Mm -hmm. There is a rumor out there that because your old show was canceled, you're going to be kicking Keller Ripa off of that Regis show and taking over. Can it's you confirm true. that? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> Confirmed. There you wow, go. Wow, that's news. Yeah. That's bigger than Odorous Urungas telling us that there's no life on Mars because it killed everybody. <laughs> SE, let's talk quickly. Speaking of your new love, it's kind of like the Toxic Avenger thing. It's weird. I don't know what to do with it. Yeah, we're but let's talk NASCAR. You're a NASCAR fan. Yeah, oh, yeah. Who would you rather go on a date with, Tony Stewart or Odorous Urungus? Uh, duh, obviously Odorous Urungus. <laughs> yeah, I mean, exactly. he's a name exactly. least. I'm a Is huge Tony fan, and he had a great number two finish this weekend. Congrats, Smoke. Speaking of Way finish, to go. Back to you, Bill. Thank Thanks you, for Griff. Look at my little hat. This is a Gore hat. Forgot to wear it. I feel bad. Thank you, Griff. Gore. Well done tonight. Juliet Huddy, always a pleasure. Delightful. Hi. Bill Schultz, you disgust me. <laughs> SE Cup, always a pleasure having you near me. That does it for me. I'm Greg Gutfeld. Go out and buy yourself a Gore CD. And yeah. a hat. And a hat. I think I will now. <laughs>